Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome to the Gaming 4. So today I'm bringing you the newest uh, update, 3.14.9.0. It actually uploaded today, and probably by the time you'll be seeing it, uh, it did, that would be the last Friday. So, anyway. So there's a lot of things that happened in this update. Um, quite a few notable things as well. I'm going to quickly just go over the items. Um, I've got them in my inventory prepared already, and so I will show you those. So, first of all, one of the most notable things that is really freaking awesome is there are now fragmentation magazines. And these pretty much are explosive ammo. As you guys can hear, it's, it's explosive. So, yeah, it's freaking awesome. A lot more deadly, supposedly. I'm not actually sure what the damage difference is, but I'm sure there is one. But yeah, super cool stuff. I guess it's not necessarily notable, but it's, it's just really cool. And so far, there is not any um, uh, boxes for this fragmentation ammo. You only have, you are only able to find it naturally throughout the world. But there are a few places, I'm not sure which maps they're in, but there are this type of ammo available to you. So, the second uh, main, probably the biggest change in this update is that there's now the addition of rain. So, you know, I guess in the past he's been adding, like, wind and stuff. Well, he's continuing to make the, the game more uh, realistic, and now there is rain. And you can actually toggle that on and off if you're admin by toggling uh, at storm. And that should toggle on a thunderstorm here in a second. Um, there is sort of shading between storm and non-storm, so it does happen gradually, which is a lot more realistic. But theoretically here in a second, we'll start to see a storm. Um, another cool thing uh, that was added is the addition. Oh, also the fragmentation magazines look like this. Pretty cool. You can definitely tell when somebody's using it. And here's the storm we were talking about. So, yeah, it actually decreases visibility a bit, uh, makes it a little more foggy, makes it darker out. And this is actually going to affect farming, uh, which is pretty realistic. Um, now, without rain, farm plants will only grow from 10 to 5 uh, in-game days. With rain, I'm not sure how fast it's going to be, but it is going to be a lot faster than that. And that is actually quite a nerf to farming because before it would really only take like one day cycle for stuff to grow. Now it's going to take multiple. So what I was going to say is that there is now a new scope out there. It is the military night vision scope. Now obviously it's kind of hard to see because it's stormy. But this scope is pretty much night vision goggles on a scope. That's, that's pretty much all it does. But yeah, it's pretty cool anyway. Hopefully at some point he'll add a thermal scope. That may be coming up soon. So let's get back into some of the buildable items. We've got gun racks. I'm not quite sure how they work. There's three types. Um, yeah, these are craftable in oak, birch, and pine. And they actually have storage. Let's see. It's about perfect. And it's pretty realistic because it shows you, you know, the gun that's in there. That's pretty sweet. Um, let's see. Second buildable item that has been added. Well, yeah. I guess there's three of them total. Is a trophy rack. And these things look like this. I think they pretty much work the same way. We'll find out in a second. Once I place them. And, yeah. Those are another craftable items. They've also got a storage. And I'm guessing whatever you put in them will be displayed like that. And let's see what happens if you put multiple objects. I'm not actually sure. It will only show maybe the first object in there. Actually, the closest to the top right. It'll show that one first. So you can hold other stuff in there, but pretty much whatever you have that is closest to this slot, I think it probably goes to the right and then down level to the right, down level to the right. So yeah, those are pretty cool as well. Just another way to sort of show off 
some of your cool items. Same thing with these uh, gun racks. It'll probably only show the first item right here. Like if you got a pistol over here and a honey badger here, it'll only show the honey badger in that slot. Now, the third and the last of the buildable materials. Um, I'm only assuming it's buildable because it didn't mention a crafting recipe. But we have a water barrel. Now, um, I think at some point what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to collect the rain and it will supposed to be uh, able to, once it fills up you'll be able to take the water out of it and yeah it's just another way of collecting resources I, I guess it's a good alternative if you're pretty much in the desert or something and it rains occasionally you'll be able to collect the water this way instead of having to uh, you know either find water bottles that are already created or having to go to a water source now speaking of that uh, there's different types of water I'm actually going to toggle this uh, storm real quick. It'll take a bit to go away, but it'll go eventually. There are now two types of water. So there's salt water and there's fresh water. Now this salt water here, is, yeah, this water is salt water. Pretty much any uh, water created by um, the world editor is going to be salt water. Now the water... Um, collected in the rain barrel is actually going to be fresh water. Now the only difference is is salt water will damage your uh, canteens and your makeshift bottles and stuff like that. Fresh water will not. So that's pretty much the only difference. Um, it's pretty minor because I think using them in the first place also damaged them. So you know I'm not sure it's such a big change but there is a distinction. Okay, so the last implementation that I'm going to mention before we go on to some of the configs and stuff that's been changed with your character and stuff is now Mega Zombies actually have a regen effect as well as um, Grizz uh, Bears and Wolves also have a regen effect. And also Mega Zombies have a farther lateral uh, punching range. So in terms of height, like if you're standing on something above them, they can't necessarily hit you up there, but they can hit you from farther away. So pretty much they're just making, you know, mega zombies, wolves and bears a little more overpowered. They're already pretty bad, but you know, just I guess intense making the game a little more intense. Okay, so on to some of the more, you know, character settings. So there were I think two main things added, pretty minor, but interesting nonetheless um, you can now create an anonymous name so the name in brackets that is like your character name I don't know if you can change that anymore I don't think you can I think it's pretty much set in stone at this point but you do have a name that's gonna be on display and that's the public name now this was implemented before but I think you can now see now as it says anonymous and then nay the gray you can now have like whatever type of name you want there I'm just gonna keep it like that for now cuz that's just my thing but I mean if you wanted to um, yeah you can do this and there's also this um, anonymous checkbox and pretty much what this will do is this will not share this name to anybody and also it will not show um, I don't I think it affects skill set but it won't show um, if you're an admin or if you're a gold member. So before if you um, didn't have that checked or before it was implemented, if you press tab inside um, a server menu, you could actually see who is gold, you know, who is admin and stuff like that. Now you can like make sure they don't know that about you. So that's pretty great as well. Um, a second thing is uh, appearance. No, not there. Inventory. So it has to do with um, you know what clothes you're wearing. And pretty much what you can do for this now is you can now control click. So let's say I want to put on a banana shirt. You can control click and automatically put that on instead of having to click in there and equip that or de-equip. So now you can pretty much just set up, you know, what you look like a lot faster. It's a lot more, you know, customizable and easier to use. So yeah, it's pretty awesome as well. Um, also, as it's showing me right down here there were actually a couple more items added to the stockpile so pretty much I don't think I've talked about this yet but the stockpile are items that have been created by fans and so as you guys can see here these are the ones that are currently available 
uh, including the new ones. I think there's only four new ones. I think that might be these four. But yeah, so I think they're mostly skins. Um, I don't think they've added any items yet. But yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, you've got to buy them, obviously. Like 99 cents and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a pretty awesome way that Nelson's uh, including you know, input from the community into the game. So yeah, pretty awesome. Also guys, uh, really quick, something I wanted to mention, um, in order for it to rain in your map, uh, this is Dusty for those of you who don't know, I'm actually currently creating a map, um, you have to be able to check this can rain button, and yeah, so pretty much you will find that within lighting, and you know, that'll pretty much make it so that it can rain, and I'm not actually sure right now if there's a place where you can tell the intensity. I know there's a rain uh, command that's actually a little more complicated. And I might make a video about that if you guys want me to, uh, if you're interested. But anyway, yeah, there's just that to, to think about. Alright, so into some of the advanced configuration options that I mentioned before. So pretty much how you get to these is um, currently it's only for servers. And for servers, you got to configure them yourself and for single player. So pretty much when you're going into a single player world, I'm just going to use this as an example, um, you've got like this normal screen, but then there's this advanced uh, button. So if you click on the advanced button, you get into this huge list. And I'm pretty much just going to run over pretty much what all these do. And, you know, I'm not going to go into a super amount of detail. But, yeah. So you can customize like everything in here. So, like, spawn chance of items. Uh, the, the range is from 0 to 1, so there's a 0.35 chance to spawn items. You can now change that. Um, respawn drop time. So, how long till it'll try to respawn another one again? I don't know if that's seconds or in-game ticks or what. I'm not sure exactly. Um, despawn natural time. So, pretty much after an item's been sitting there for 900, uh, I think, seconds. I think seconds is a good guess it will disappear naturally. Um, respawn time, um, that would be how many seconds it would take to spawn in. Um, has durability, so you can actually take durability on and off. So if you're doing easy, you're probably going to want that off because, you know, in easy, there is no durability. Everything's 100%, but you can actually customize that now. So that's pretty sweet. So you could do an easy with durability if you wanted. Um, vehicles, this is just respawn time for vehicles. Uh, zombies, spawn chance, 0.2%. Uh, I mean, 20%, I guess, because if it's out of one. Um, loot chance, 55% chance. Crawler chance, sprinter chance. This is also easy, so there should be zero chance of either of those. You can make them, actually, thinking about it, you could make them 100% crawler or 100% sprinter. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Really, really cool. Um, respawn daytime. Um, yep, that's that's the chance of them spawning during the day. Obviously, larger chance of them spawning at night. Uh, respawn beacon time. They obviously spawn immediately after placing a beacon, so that's going to be zero. But you could make that, you know, a little bit of time. Damage multiplier, like, you know, how much damage they do, kind of. How much armor they do, that's uh, in terms of multipliers at least. Animals, you've got the respawn time for animals, the damage multiplier for animals, that would only be wolves and bears. Also, armor multiplier, that would cover all of them. Um, barricades, armor multiplier. So barricades, you can actually customize how strong they are as well. So if you put it like 0.1 or something like that, if you like punch it a couple times, it'll break. But then like if you put it at like 10, you could like shoot at that thing all day and it won't break. So that's just the sort of idea behind that. Structure, armor multiplier, you can barely see that. There we go, that's a little better. That's a similar thing to the barricade multiplier. Also, experience multiplier, this is a really cool one. Because, you know, if you're tired of, like, having to kill a crap ton of zombies, to get enough experience to actually max out some things, you could actually bump this up and, like, really, bumping it up to two, this is a multiplier. So, really, it's exponential. So, you know, you can do crazy stuff with that. Also, detect radius multiplier. That is for um, zombies. How far away can they detect players? Um, can break legs. I thought this was really interesting. I mean, you could turn it off so you literally can't break your legs. Also, can start bleeding. You can turn it off so you can't start bleeding. Also, 
these are even even worse really can't fix legs or can't stop bleeding so if you do happen to break your legs you could make it permanently so they would always have a broken leg i just think that'd be terrible but i guess if you want to do that 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 would be something you could do and also same with bleeding if you start bleeding you can't stop bleeding and of course if you really screw stuff up and you just want to reset it there's a restore defaults button and you know that's obviously a good thing to have because as you start messing with this stuff you may not re remember what the defaults were but yeah just a cool extra way to you know enhance gameplay in that way another thing about servers that I wanted to mention um, is that now after you leave a server and then uh, also same with the world after you leave a world and then join a world it will save the time of day so I think Nelson's really um, focusing on the importance of like times of day and like rain and stuff like that and so now pretty much what it used to be like if you had a server running and you everybody left the server and you got back on if when you got off it could be like daytime when you got back on it could be in the middle of the night you really it's it's like randomized I'm not sure why it does that but now if you get off like right in the morning and you get back on it'll be also right in the morning so it'll now save your spot like that Another thing I wanted to mention, you guys, I should have mentioned it before when I was doing the other stuff, but also in the editor, um, as you can see now, the arrows will rotate based on your camera angle. So in the past, um, if you were like behind this area, this red arrow might be covered up by the object you're trying to move itself. Now, um, this actually changes based on where your camera is. And it is kind of notable, actually. Um, it's pretty interesting that's pretty much all you all wanted to show you guys with that but that was actually suggested by uh, another youtuber so it's it's pretty interesting I think Nelson is actually taking his fans seriously possibly he got a lot of complaints about that of people wanting to change that but this actually was suggested by you know a user of the game and he respected that and actually implemented that and of course it was a good idea anyway but I just thought it was really cool that he's paying attention to the people that actually play the game the last thing I wanted to mention is that he has now added some new analytics and I don't think he's implemented them up here yet but he's added quite a few so what I mean by analytics is like the number of headshots per se which is up here and you know what he's done is he's got the number of headshots uh, I myself or you yourself have gotten compared to how many worldwide but he's also now um, also added um, the types of deaths you have like what you were killed by obviously he has the number of deaths already I think yeah he's got the number of deaths but he has now added you know what you've been killed by as well as um, some analytics uh, with the um, the new configuration he's actually you know added some analytics with that so probably like times you've uh, broken a bone or times you've bled and he's also um, got new analytics about the average frame rate so I just thought that was pretty interesting you know not really important but just you know another one of those cool things that Nelson's doing with this game so yeah, he'll be able to show the average frame rate of everybody worldwide. So that'll be cool. I guess you'll be able to tell, you know, whether you're on the upper end of the spectrum in terms of the people that play this game. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching this video. That This has been update 3.14.9.0. Hopefully uh, you guys were able to see this in time to have it be relevant. Um, Please uh, stay tuned uh, if you guys want to see these. I will be uploading these update videos probably every Friday, every Saturday, because um, they come out Friday. So I will get them out to you guys as soon as possible. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see some more. I will see you all later. Thank you.